Hey everyone, and welcome back to Tableau Certified Data Analyst Exam Prep. So we're moving on to Domain 2, which is pretty diverse, and it also accounts for 41% of the overall exam. So this is a domain that you want to focus on. A lot of the questions that you will see on the practical portion of this exam will be related to the topics covered here. So to help you get an idea of what the hands-on tasks may look like, I've also included some practical mock-up exercises to go through as we review the different subsections. So let's take a look at the breakdown. For section 2.1, you should know how to create calculated fields. So you should be comfortable performing basic string operations, um, such as creating new customer codes, for example, or extracting the middle name of the customer. And you should also be familiar with three different types of level of detail expressions fixed, include, and exclude, because you may have a question that asks you to choose the correct LOD for a specific scenario. For section 2.2, you want to make sure that you review the not so common table calculations, such as how to compute the 50 day moving average or the 100 day moving average, as well as the compound growth rate. When working with table calculations, it's very important to understand scope. So for example, what would be the resulting output if you were to compute your calculation using table down versus table across? For section 2.3, you should definitely know how to create year over year percent difference, and you should be comfortable using index, rank, first and last functions as well. Okay, so let's take a look at some questions. All right, so this question here is asking us to complete the calculation to return the middle name of the customer if it exists, as well as the last name. So we're given the customer name table, and you can see that some of the customers have the middle name as well as the last name. So our task is to retain the middle name if there is one. Now, if you were to just use a regular split function to split up your customer name into first and last name, you would be losing the actual middle name of the customer. So you would only get the last name. So in order to achieve what this question is asking us to do, we actually need to use two different string functions. So the answer here is D, we're going to use the mid and the find functions. If you guys are not familiar with these string functions, make sure you go ahead and review those. All right, so this question might be an easy question for those of you who have a lot of experience using Excel. So here we need to complete the statement below to classify our products in terms of profitability. So we're looking at product IDs and for any product ID with profit greater than zero, we want to label it as profit, else loss. So the easiest way to achieve this is to use a derivative of the standard if then else expression. So we're going with answer B. So this expression is going to check whether a condition is met and then return one value if it's true and another value if it's false. So make sure you guys review the following string functions because you may get a question or two asking you to fill in the blanks and use the correct function. I do have a tutorial on the left and right functions, so make sure to check it out using the link above. All right, so this brings us to our very first hands-on example. This question is asking us to create a level of detail expression to show total sales by month without the regional component. So we need to create a level of detail expression that will exclude the region that we have in the view. We're going to create a calculated field, which is going to be an LOD expression. It's going to exclude the region from the view and give us the total sum of sales. And then we're going to drop this calculated field on the color shelf. All right, so moving on to table calculations. Um, with table calculations, you may see examples where they provide you with a table and they ask you what would be the output if you were to change your scope. So instead of computing information using table across, you're computing using table down, and you actually have to perform that calculation in your head. They're not going to give you very large numbers. It's going to be a very simple calculation, but you do have to know how changing the scope will actually affect the resulting output. So here we're given a table that shows segment sales over time. So our task in this case is to figure out what would be the values for the corporate segment in 2019 if you apply the table calculation to compute the difference across table down. The answer in this case is D. So in order to review this information, I would highly recommend creating a very simple table and just changing the scope. So make sure that you understand how changing the scope affects the result of your calculation. In this question, we have to specify which rank function was used to get the resulting output. So here we have our customer name, we have the rank and we also have the sales values. If you take a closer look at the sales values and the ranks associated with them, we can clearly see that even though our values might be the same, 
like the first two rows that you see in a table, we still get a different rank. So the only function that's going to give you a different rank for the same values is going to be rank unique. So the answer here is C. This view is showing us historical sales over time. And the question is asking us to compute the 50 day moving average of sales. So we're going to create a calculate field and we're going to use the window average function. To compute the 50 day moving average, we want to include the 49 prior data points as well as the current data point. I have an interesting tutorial on how to use moving averages in trading. So make sure you guys go ahead and check it out. So next what we want to do is we want to bring in the moving average calculation and create a dual axis chart by merging the two charts together. Make sure you double check your scope because this is still a table calculation and that you also choose a different color to represent your 50 day moving average so you can easily differentiate it. All right, so here we have a function that many of you have probably never heard of, and it's the first function. This function assigns a value to each record starting at the very top. So similar to what an index function does, so an index assigns a value based on the positioning of the record, so it starts at the top and it works its way down. The first function works in a similar manner, but instead of assigning one to the first record, it assigns a zero. And then the value that is returned afterwards represents the offset from the first row. So let's take a look at this question. When first is computed with the date partition, what is the result of the row with index number three? So here, if you take a look at this table, we can see that record number three gets an index of three and the computed value for the first function is actually negative two. And the negative two represents the offset from the very first record here, which is the zero value. Make sure you guys review the following table calculation functions, because I guarantee that you will see a good number of questions testing your knowledge and understanding of these specific functions. All right, so moving on to subsections 2.4 and 2.5. For subsection 2.4, you should already know how to apply filters to dimensions and measures, and you should have an understanding of how to configure your filter settings to give you the top number of products or the top number of customers for the particular dimension that you're interested in. You should also have a good understanding of how context filters work and how you would change a dimension filter to context filter. Make sure you guys review Tableau's order of operations table to compare where context filters are evaluated in relation to dimension filters and measure filters. This is definitely going to help you understand how Tableau processes context filters. You should also be able to describe the steps you would take to apply filters to multiple sheets and data sources. For section 2.5, you see a lot of red here. And that is because parameters are super important for this exam. You will see a lot of questions that ask you to create a parameter, troubleshoot a parameter, or how to link your parameter control to your visualization. So you need to make sure that you know how to use parameters in calculations with filters, as well as with reference lines. Let's have a look at some sample parameter questions. In this question, we've created a parameter called dimension swap, and we can see the parameter properties in the screenshot here. So our task is to complete the calculation to link the parameter control to our visualization. So what we need to do is we need to write a simple case statement, which is going to link the parameter control to the visualization once we actually bring in the calculation in the view. So the correct answer here is E, and that is because single or double quotes in this case are actually interchangeable. So both of these statements are correct. So essentially we're saying when our end user selects a value from our parameter control, which is for example, a category, then we want to display the category field. When our end user makes a selection on segment, for instance, then display the segment breakdown and so on. So here we have another parameter related question and we're asked to create a parameter called top end cities with a minimum range of five, maximum range of 30, and the step size of five. Then we want to link this parameter control to our visualization using a filter. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our parameter, create parameter. We're going to call this top and cities. Our parameter type is going to accept integers and for allowable values, we want to select the range here. So the range of values minimum is five, maximum is 30, and the step size is five. The next step would be to show the parameter control. So we're going to click on the actual parameter, show parameter, and now we can see the slider on the right-hand side. 
Since this parameter is not linked to our visualization yet, this is why it's not showing any interactivity. So what we need to do is we need to link this parameter to the visualization using a filter. So in order to do that, we're going to click on the city dimension. We're going to choose filter, navigate over to top. We're going to select by field. And instead of going with this option, which will hard code your filter to give you the top 10, you want to change this to top and cities, which is going to link your filter and the parameter control. So we're going to click OK. And now we can see that the parameter control is now linked to our visualization. So what we can do is we can interact with this parameter control to display the top number of cities. Right, so this is a context filter example. So here we're looking at product sales within a specific subcategory. In this case, we're looking at the table subcategory. And the task here is to show the top five products within the selected subcategory. So if we were to use the original dimension filters, we would do something like this. We would click on filter, we would say, give me the top five based on the sum of sales. And once we do that, we will see that the data is not showing up. And that is because Tableau does not know how to process this data. So we need to tell Tableau to first process the subcategory dimension, and then within the selected subcategory, give us the top five product names. So we're going to set the subcategory dimension to be a context filter. So we're going to click on the actual dimension itself. We're going to add to context, and then we're able to display our top five. And the color indicates that one of these filters is set as a context filter, which means that Tableau is going to process the context filter first before it processes your dimension filter. And so to understand how context filters work and why the process information before dimension filters, I'm going to once again refer you back to the order of operations table. It's very, very important for understanding the order of processing that takes place in the background. Now, this is a fairly easy and straightforward question, which is asking us to apply the order date filter across multiple sheets. So here I have two additional visualizations, global filters viz1 and global filters viz2, and I need to apply the order date to those two additional sheets. So what I'll do is I'll click on the actual order date. I'm going to choose apply to worksheet and selected worksheets. So here I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to check off additional sheets that I want this filter to apply across. So in this case, we're applying it to global filters viz1 and global filters viz2. We're going to click OK. And what you will see is you will see this little icon beside the order date dimension. If you hover over the icon, you will see that there's a message that says that it's been applied to multiple worksheets with the same data source. And if we open up one of our sheets here, or one of the vizs, you will see that the same filter has been applied across those two sheets. Make sure you guys review the order of operations table. So this table is going to help you understand how different types of filters are evaluated. And it's also going to help you explain the difference between fixed level of detail expressions versus include and exclude, right? So if you take a closer look at this table, you can actually see that the fixed level of detail expression is evaluated somewhere in between context filters and dimension filters. And your include and exclude statements are evaluated after your dimension filters are evaluated. So the key difference between different types of LODs here is that the fixed LOD expression is completely independent of your dimension filters. You also need to know the steps to create a parameter. So the first step is always to actually create the parameter control. The second step is to show the parameter control. So you have to click on the actual parameter once it's created and explicitly specify that you want to show it because Tableau is not going to automatically show it in your sheet. Third step would be to actually link your parameter control to your visualization using a reference line, a calculation or a filter. And the fourth step is to actually interact with your parameter control and update your information in the visualization through this interaction. You also need to understand how to use a parameter to filter across multiple data sources. And I've actually created a tutorial in the past that walks you through the different steps. So make sure you check it out. I've also included all the links to additional resources related to the material that was covered in the description section of this video. Now, this is only part one of domain two. There's gonna be a lot more questions coming. So I should be posting the second part of domain two before the end of this week. All right, so thank you guys for all of your comments and feedback. Please stay tuned for part two of Domain 2, 
and let me know if there are any specific topics you would like for me to cover in more detail.